Hi students, welcome back to the class. So far we have discussed about vectors and in the last class we discussed about cross product of two vectors and we learned that any two vectors can be multiplied in two different ways. One is the dot product method and the next one is the cross product method and we learned that the dot product is also called as a scalar product which is, which is called because a dot product always result in the in a scalar right and we also learned that a cross product can be also named as a vector product because the end result will be a vector and in this class we are going to define or we are going to explain how we can find the cross product of two vectors if they are given in the component form we already learned the basic definition of cross product of two vectors as a cross b is nothing but mod a mod b sin theta n cap where theta is the angle between those two vectors but in this class if we are not provided with the angle between those vectors we have to find the cross product and in this class we are going to explain how we can do that so without any further intro let's move on to the topic so now suppose that we are given with two vectors say a is equal to vector a is equal to a1i cap plus a2j cap plus a3k cap and vector b is equal to b1i cap plus b2j cap plus b3k cap suppose that we are provided with two vectors in the component form like this of course these three two vectors are in the component form because a contains three components namely a1 a2 a3 b contains three components namely b1 b2 b3 okay these two vectors are in the component form now we are going to derive a condition for finding the cross product of these two vectors when they are given in the component form we shall check how so we have to find a cross b that is a cross b and we shall just substitute the component form of a and the component form of b in this entire equation then it will become a1i cap plus a2j cap plus a3k cap cross b1i cap plus b2j cap plus b3k cap so we just substituted the component form of the vectors in a cross b now we can find the cross product just by expanding this bracket first we can multiply this one with each of the components in this bracket so we get equal to a1 into a1i cap into b1i cap sorry a1i cap cross b1i cap a1 and b1 are scalars so we can easily associate a1 and b1 so a1 b1 into i cap cross i cap we just associated those scalars in the first product plus we are now going to multiply this component with the second component a1 i cap plus b2 into b2 j cap that is a1 b2 into i cap cross j cap clear we just multiply the respective component not multiplying sorry finding the cross product now we are going to multiply a1 i cap plus b into b3 k cap that is plus a1 b3 into i cap cross k cap i cap cross k cap just as simple as that now we are going to so the first set of multiplication is over now we are going to multiply this actually multiplication in case of vector algebra means cross products just remember that whenever i am saying multiplication just understand that it means cross product now a to j cap into each of them that is plus a to j cap into first component a to b1 into j cap cross i cap j cap cross i cap plus a to j cap into b to j cap that is a to b to into j cap cross j cap plus a to j cap into b3 k cap that is a to b3 j cap cross k cap right now the second set of multiplication is also over now we shall move to the third set of multiplication that is plus a3 k cap into b1 i cap that is a3 b1 into k cap cross i cap 
Now next, A3 K cap into B2 J cap plus A3 B2 into K cap cross J cap. Right. Now A3 K cap into B3 K cap that is plus A3 B3 into K cap cross K cap. That's it. That's as simple as that. So we multiplied each one with each one here. So we get an expanded product like this. Now we are going to apply some result. Yesterday we learned that I cap cross I cap equal to J cap cross J cap equal to equal to K cap cross K cap is nothing but zero. Right. Also we learned a circle like this I J K I cap J cap K cap. See uh, from this circle in this direction we learned that I cap cross J cap is nothing but K cap. J cap cross K cap is nothing but I cap and so on. Also we learned that if we reverse the direction that is J cap cross I cap is nothing but minus K cap. Yesterday we learned so J cap cross I cap is nothing but minus K cap and so on. K cap cross J cap. They are also reverse direction is reversed. K cap cross J cap is also nothing but minus I cap and so on. If it is in the normal direction we get positive vectors whereas if it, if it is in the reverse direction we get negative vectors. Using that we shall expand this. I cap cross I cap this is 0 so we can eliminate this term. Now uh, J cap cross J cap this is 0 we can eliminate since we learned this result. Now K cap cross K cap we can eliminate this result. Fine. Now first term is A1 B2 into I cap cross J cap. I cap cross J cap is nothing but K cap. So we can substitute A1 B2 into K cap. So we return the, the second time. Now A1 B3 into I cap cross K cap. I cap cross K cap which is in the reverse direction. So I cap cross K cap is nothing but minus J cap. This is nothing but minus J cap. So plus into minus is nothing but minus minus A1 B3 J cap. Clear. So we return this also. Now A2 B1 into J cap cross I cap. J cap cross I cap which is also in the reverse direction. So it is nothing but minus K cap. So we have this is nothing but minus K cap plus into minus is nothing but minus A2 B1 A2 B1 K cap. So we return this also. Now we shall move to this term. This is all by, uh, this is already eliminated. Now the next one A2 B3 J cap cross K cap. J cap cross K cap is nothing but I cap. So we have 8 plus A2 B3 j cap cross k cap is nothing but i cap very simple now so we return this also we can eliminate this from our product now a3 b1 into k cap cross i cap see k cap cross i cap is nothing but j cap so we have plus a3 b1 into a3 b1 into k cap cross i cap is nothing but j cap clear now again we return this also we can eliminate this easily a3 B2 into K cap cross J cap. K cap cross J cap. This is in the reverse direction. So it is nothing but minus I cap. So A3 B2 into this is nothing but minus I cap plus into minus is nothing but minus. So it is equal to minus A3 B2 I cap. So we return this also. This is already eliminated. So after writing all these terms, we get a expansion like this and we are going to simplify it now. Now see, we can take a cap common from this term and this term. We can take j cap common from this term and this term and we can take i cap common from this and this. So first of all, to get a standard form, we are going to take i cap common from this and this. So it will become a2b3 minus a3b2 minus a3b2 i cap. So we took i cap common from these two terms. Now we can take j cap common from this term and this term. So plus sorry 
so my plus a3 b1 a3 b1 minus a2 sorry a1 b3 this is j cap minus a1 b3 j cap now last one we can take k cap common from this as well as this that is plus a1 b2 minus a2 b1 k cap so simple right now in order to get a standard form we are going to take minus common from these terms minus one common from this term so it will become a2 b3 minus a3 b2 i cap we are going to take minus common from these two terms so that the terms inside will get reversed that is minus of a1 b3 minus a3 b1 j cap plus a1 b2 minus a2 b1 k cap see after all the process we got an end result like this do you remember this result anywhere else in mathematics have you learned such an expression anywhere just think have you learned an expression like this anywhere in this classes in the plus two mathematics so we shall recall it each term containing a multiplication with i cap j cap and k cap so we are going to write this as i cap j cap k cap in the first row then we are going we have some multiplication so we shall write it like a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 p3 and we are going to find the determinant of this matrix see i cap into a2 b3 minus a3 b2 a2 b3 minus a3 b2 minus j cap into a1 b3 minus a3 b1 a1 b3 minus a3 b1 plus k cap into a1 b2 minus a2 b1 a1 b2 minus a2 b1 oh wow this is nothing but this determinant the last expression is nothing but this determinant so always remember that this is a fantastic result always remember that whenever we want to find a, a bar is equal to a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap b bar is equal to b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap always remember the cross product of a and b can be evaluated by just evaluating this determinant you don't need to memorize this result even this result just memorize that the cross product of these two vectors is nothing but the determinant of the matrix i cap j cap k cap and a1 a2 a3 the components of the first vector in the second row the components of the second vector in the third row that's it so always remember that in order to find the cross product of two vectors just find the determinant so we shall i hope you understood the topic very well if you understood the topic or the process very well always remember that you don't know even if you don't need to memorize this result just keep in mind the process by which we derived the end result and the results we used in the process of derivation because they are, they are very important the conceptual understanding of these steps are very important because it helps us to do more problems regarding cross product now we shall move to some problems relating to cross product the examples in your textbook so this is the example number 22 of your textbook find mod a cross b if a is equal to 2 i cap plus j cap plus 3 k cap and b is equal to 3 i cap plus 5 j cap minus 2 k cap we are asked to find what modulus of a cross b this is very simple for you now because now you know how to find the cross product of two vectors when the vectors are given in the component form what is a cross b is nothing but determinant of i cap j cap k cap now the components 2 1 3 2 1 3 next the components of the second vector 3 5 minus 2 3 5 minus 2 it is equal to i cap into 1 into minus 2 minus 2 minus 15 which is minus 17 i hope you know that uh, to find how to find the determinant of a matrix very fast if not just practice some with some matrices it will help you to improve your speed now minus j cap into 
minus 4 minus 9 is nothing but minus 13 plus k cap into 10 minus 3 is nothing but 7 so on simplification it is minus 17 i cap minus into minus is nothing but plus 13 j cap plus 7 k cap right now we can find mod a cross b very easily we know how to find the modulus of a vector right it is equal to root of 17 square plus 13 square plus 7 square it is nothing but root of 507 right this much simple so hope you understood this example very well it is very simple if you know the how to find the cross product of two vectors when it is given in the component form now we shall move to the next example now moving on to the next example the next example is that find the unit vector find a unit vector perpendicular to each of the vectors a plus b and a minus b a plus b and a minus b where vector a is nothing but i cap plus j cap plus k cap vector b is nothing but i cap plus 2 j cap plus 3 k cap we have to find a unit vector perpendicular to a plus b and a minus b so always remember that whenever we are given with the two vectors the cross product is nothing but mod a mod b sin theta n cap where theta is the angle between those two vectors when theta is equal to pi by 2 or perpendicular when the two vectors are perpendicular a cross b is nothing but mod a mod b n cap right so we have to find a cross b at first then in order to find a unit vector perpendicular to both the vectors it is enough to find the uh, it is enough to find the unit vector which is in the direction of the vector obtained by a cross b so in order to find a unit vector in the direction of that vector just divide the resultant vector by its magnitude just as we done before so first of all always remember that if you are asked to find a vector or a unit vector perpendicular to two vectors first of all we have to find the cross product of two vectors here we are asked to find the vector perpendicular to a plus b and a minus b so we have to find a plus b cross a minus b at first so that's the first step so here we have to find a plus b and a minus b a plus b is nothing but 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus 4 k cap right and a minus b is nothing but 0 i cap 0 i cap plus minus j cap minus j cap minus 2 k cap so it is enough for it is very easy i think it is very easy for you to do evaluate a plus b and a minus b so which is because we are learned we have learned these things before uh, very earlier in our classes so we can find a plus b and a minus b just like that now we have to find a plus b cross a minus b right it is easy for you now by because just apply the result we can find the the resultant determinant in order to find the resultant cross product so just substitute the components in the second row 2 3 4 and the components of the third vector second vector in the third row 0 minus 1 minus 2 after determining the determinant it will be i cap into i cap into minus 6 minus minus 4 it is nothing but minus 6 plus 4 which is equal to minus 2 minus j cap into minus j cap into so it will be of minus 4 minus 4 minus 0 so it is minus 4 plus k cap into if you have any doubt regarding how to find the determinant of a matrix just ask me personally because it is very simple and i think you are already experts in how to find the determinant of a matrix so we shall move on k cap into minus 2 minus 0 so it is minus 2 so we will get minus 2 i cap plus 4 j cap minus 2 k cap let it be a vector named as c now in order to find the unit vector this is a vector perpendicular to both the vectors in order to find a unit vector perpendicular to both these vectors so we have to find c cap just find c cap it is nothing but minus 2 i cap plus 4 j cap minus 2 k cap whole divided by square root of 4 plus 16 plus 4 which is equal to what square root of 20 plus 4 it is nothing but 24 so this will be a unit vector 
which is perpendicular to both a plus b as well as a minus b. Always remember that whenever you are asked to find a unit vector perpendicular to both the vectors, just follow this step. First of all, find the cross product. Then divide the vector obtained by the magnitude of the vector. Now we shall move to the next question. The next question is example number 24. Find the area of a triangle having the points A111, B123 and C231 as vertices. Yesterday we learned that or in the previous class we learned that whenever we are provided with two vectors as the sides of a triangle, the area of the triangle is nothing but half of modulus of A cross B, right? But in this case we are, we are, we are not provided with two vectors like this but instead we are provided with three points so first of all we have to find the position of the vector the equation of the vector connecting these two points so by using the equation of the vector joining two points we can find a vector for this line as well as a vector for this line after finding this you have to apply this formula you have to find a cross b right then the area of the triangle is nothing but half of modulus of a cross b right this much simple so i am giving you this as a homework for you you have to work it in your home and check the result in the next video so i hope you understood the concept very clearly if you have any doubt regarding this class just comment it on the comment section or ask me personally if you have any doubt then also remember that in this class we learned just how to find the cross product when the component forms of two vectors are given. Just keep in mind and come to the next class. Stay tuned for the next class. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.